Hey everybody, welcome back to Vinyl Junkie Record Shop. My name is Mike and here we are for the first video of 2023 is always the uh, recap of 2022 where I talk to you guys about uh, my uh, favorite records that came out in the previous year. Uh, this is unscripted off the cuff, so it's probably going to be a little bit raw. You might hear some additional noise in the background. That's my co-stars Jack and Sammy. Uh, who run their little dog uh, hooves across the hardwood floor and make a little clickety clack, clackety clack now and then. Um, clickety clack, clackety clack. That was a that was a lyric from a Clutch song. Uh, anyway, uh, if you like Clutch, you know what I'm talking about. So anyway, uh, it's been a while since I've gotten with you guys. Life gets in the way. Haven't made a lot of videos, but this is always one of my favorite ones to make, where I get to blab on about uh, uh, my favorite releases. Of, of the previous year. So um, what I kind of want to do is I'm going to do an official, I guess an official, top 10. I'm going to show you the, the, the 10 albums that I've identified as my, my favorites, my clear-cut favorites throughout the year. And then I'm going to show you um, the rest of the new releases that I picked up in 2022 because I didn't get a whole lot of physical copies of new releases. I uh, pretty much buy only vinyl anymore. I don't like buying CDs nowadays, and I'll be honest with you, it's uh, with uh, the convenience of digital downloading or, or, or Apple Music and things like that that you do pay for. Um, uh, you know, it just saves you so much money uh, because this is an expensive hobby, uh, specifically uh, record collecting. So, that being said, um, the, the reason I haven't collected a whole lot this year is really pretty simple, uh, cost effectiveness. Um, and the decision, that, the decision that goes into uh, whether I pick up a record uh, um, in, in a physical copy is based on pretty much three factors. One, I have to really like it. It has to be a record that I really, really enjoy and that I, that I want to immerse myself in that listening experience when you sit down and put a record on the turntable and listen to it. Uh, but beyond that, it really comes down to uh, two things, cost and availability. Um, and, you know, recently, if you're a metal fan, uh, so many of the really good metal albums that are coming out these days are on foreign record labels, and they're just difficult to get. I've got uh, uh, at least one in here that I had to order from uh, from Europe, and it just costs so much in shipping to get them over here that, uh, you know, I, I, I don't, I just don't like that. Um, so... I will preface this list by saying there are going to be some really well-known and, and incredible records that came out that you're not going to see on my list, simply because I wasn't excited about investing uh, the money into picking them up. Most specifically, uh, the, the biggest one is going to be uh, um, uh, The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead by Megadeth. Fantastic album. I love it. I really would like to have it. But I'm just been I've shied away from the thirty-six dollar price of it on you know double vinyl. I'm just not sure I want to spend that much money on it. Uh, and the other one uh, specifically uh, is the new the new Queensrÿche uh, Digital Noise Alliance. Um, that album has really grown on me here in the last couple weeks because the last two weeks of the year I've just immersed myself in all these albums that I might have missed or that I didn't pick up, thinking, man, is there one that I really should key in on? Um, and that, that's one of them. I, I think that it's its a fantastic album. Might be my favorite of the Todd LaTorre era Queensryche albums, but it's just not going to be on my list because I haven't bought it. So I'm going to mention a few albums um, that I haven't got uh, that I'd like to have that uh, that might have made the list if I, if I had bought them and had them to show. I'm going to mention one that I do not have a physical copy yet. I ordered it uh, from a, a European label or a, a, in Greece. And I'm waiting for it to get here. Who knows when it might get here? But it's clearly it was clearly one of my um, uh, favorite albums of the year. So uh, when we get to it, I, you know, I like to cheat in my videos. I cheat a little bit because I want to show everything. Um, also, I kind of broke it down into it's hard and heavy, hard rock, heavy metal. I'm going to show my top favorite three hard rock albums that I don't think I want to throw in with the category of some of the other metal bands that I've got in here. And that way, again, I get to get to show some stuff I got. So let's start the video with that one. Uh, my, my top three uh, um, hard rock albums. And we'll start it with, uh, this one was number one on a lot of lists. Um, and, and I really like it, but uh, uh, I, I just, you know, I wasn't ready to say this was the best album of the year. But this is the new Ghost um, in, uh, in, in Pyram. 
is that how you say Impera. Impera. Um, you know, I like Ghost. I've always liked Ghost. And I just think, think this is a really well-crafted album. It's got really catchy songs. Uh, the performances are, are really good. And, I, you know, I, I think Ghost is doing everything that uh, they need to do. Uh, Tobias needs to do to, to be um, a, uh, a modern uh, rock star. Um, and this album's got really great material on it. Uh, um, Kaiserian. Uh, great song, man! Do I really like that song? Uh, uh, Call me little sunshine, so catchy, uh, pretty simple, but just just a, a, an earworm. And uh, uh, all these songs are really good. Um, you, th this album kind of has more of a, a arena rock feel to it, as far as it's not really metal. It's not as cerebral, I think, as some of the um, previous albums. And uh, there's a lot less comparisons to Blue Oyster Cult. Um, and maybe more to, to Def Leppard, uh, 80s era Def Leppard, I guess, maybe, I don't know, but uh, really good album and I like a lot. And then coming in at two, uh, one of my favorite bands ever, I, I don't think there's an album of theirs that I don't like, uh, this is Clutch, Sunrise on Slaughter Beach, uh, just a great album. This one's kind of lean, mean, comes in, gets gets taken care of business within about 35 minutes or so, uh, but all, all the songs are really good, um, Clutch does not disappoint. Great album cover. Uh, this one was uh, available, you know, for like under 20 bucks, so that kind of made it a no-brainer. Uh, but uh, yeah, Clutch, Sunrise on Slaughter Beach, really like it a lot. And then this album, uh, this is pretty, pretty much decided I wanted to, I wanted to have this on my year-end list from the moment it came out, just because of the uh, the lush, warm, fond memories that it um, gave me as I listened to it. And that's Rock Believer from Scorpions. Um, this album is just really, really, really good. Um, when I put this on and spun it the first time, it took me back to, to when I was a, a wee lad, uh, listening to, uh, Blackout. Um, and then, uh, I, you know, I think that was the album that this kind of reminded me of, um, uh, mostly. Um, you know, the Scorpions then went on a after, after that with, uh, I love first thing to be a little more, um, arena pop pop metal oriented uh but uh, blackout just had that swagger and that edge uh that uh, made it uh, an all-time hard rock heavy metal classic and and uh, most of these tracks on this album um elicited that response for me when i listened to it uh especially i i, I think it's uh is it seventh son i think seventh son is the is their slow and brooding um riffer that uh, reminds me of uh, China White, which is one of my all-time favorite uh, Scorpion songs. But um, lyrically, uh, you know, not not the deepest subject matter, you know, when you're when you're dealing with the Scorpions. But uh, come on, you're talking about a band whose uh, legacy lyric might be uh, "Feed her inches, give her inches, and feed her well." We're not, we're not talking about Pulitzer Prize winning material here. Uh, so, yeah, lyrically, a little odd, but um, this album really reinvents, I, I think, reinvents the band, gives them some, uh, reinserts their uh, divine uh, right as one of the all-time classic rock bands. Um, and kind of like the, the, the red and black in the album, you know, this, this back photo, kind of very reminiscent of uh, ACDC's uh, comeback effort that uh, reestablished them as one of the finest institutes in all of hard rockdom. All right, so that's for the hard rock. Now I'm going to very quickly go through the the albums that I picked up um, that didn't make my top ten list, but, but were albums that I kind of wanted to to feature at least. Um, and we'll just start kind of in no random order. Uh, this one's a death metal release from I believe they are um, they're uh, Chinese American. Uh, band members from out in LA or in California. Um, I can't think of the guy's name. Who's the Andrew Lee? Andrew Lee is the head guy here, uh, uh, the the chief songwriter and band leader. Uh, and he's an up and coming uh, young lad in the world of American death metal. And this is ripped to shreds with Jubian. Um, you know, if you like Cannibal Corpse and that kind of groovy, brutal death metal. Uh, I think that's kind of more where this band leans. 
to that kind of Floridian style, or, or uh, not, well, Floridian and New York style of death metal, as opposed to the more European and Swedish sounding. Uh, but, uh, you know, with a, a, a band name like Rip to Shreds, you know what you're going to get. So this has got some really groovy riffs, uh, some really fantastic musicianship in there. Uh, and if, if you like death metal, uh, I think this is kind of one of the standout releases of the year. And I found it for uh, 19 bucks at a local record store, decided it was worth picking up. Um, well, we're talking about uh, death metal. Let's talk about uh, uh, the other side of the spectrum, um, a classic Euro uh, Swedish Euro European style of death metal. This is a bloodbath, survival of the sickest. I think this made... This made uh, Brave Words and Bloody Knuckles top album of the year. I was kind of surprised at that. Um, but, uh, you know, a, a, a death metal super group uh, fronted by uh, uh, guys with European names that I've never been able to really pronounce. Uh, uh, vocal performance by Nick Holmes, Paradise Lost. I, I think that's uh, what uh, I really enjoyed about, uh, about this album. He has that deep, kind of more guttural sounding death voice, but uh, he's articulate and you can understand the words that are that he is spewing forth and that's important to me when it comes to, to death metal most of the time um, but uh, a really interesting take on this album has been described as uh, Swedish death metal by way of uh, Florida groove and uh, New York groove so uh, there's if you like Cannibal Corpse there's a lot to be enjoyed here if you like uh, Entombed and um, uh, who am I missing? Dismember. There's a lot of that in here too, but uh, just a lot of groovy riffs and memorable moments and hooks of plenty. Uh, a really good death metal album um, if you're into death metal. Uh, switching gears a little bit, let's do a trad speed thrash kind of. This was released on Napalm Records. This is Evil Invaders. They're from, I forget if they're from It'll, where, where they're from, what country they're from, somewhere over there in Europe. But uh, this is their third full length, I believe. And um, they've progressed stylistically over the releases of their albums. This one has a lot of more traditional heavy metal elements thrown into uh, the, the uh, speed and, uh, and, and melodic thrash elements. Um, some really good stuff on here. Uh, so Evil Invaders with Shattering Reflection. Um, then let's see, classic American thrash. Here we go. Um, band needs really no introduction. This is Municipal Waste with Electrified Brain. Uh, straightforward uh, party thrash, uh, uh, crossover kind of thrash metal. Um, lots of uh, memorable moments on this album. Uh, got it again, got it for a really good price. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't even think I've opened this up yet. It's got this blue marble vinyl. It just uh, uh, got it here pretty recently. Um, but yeah, I mean, most most thrash metal fans know who Municipal Waste is. Uh, and it's a very enjoyable thrash album. Uh, more thrash. Uh, I picked this one up from Napalm because, again, it was the price. It was inexpensive. And I absolutely love this album cover. This is The New Destruction with Diabolical. Uh, I, you know, this, this was a grower. I didn't love this the first time I heard it. I thought it was... I don't want to say generic or, or same, samey, but I mean, it didn't really, um, I don't think it's really exploring new avenues, um, for the band, but do, do we want them to, I mean, what, you know, destruction is one of the, uh, the big four of, of the German thrash and, and it, it's, you know, you, you expect what you're going to get from them as a quality thrash metal album. And there's a lot of that on here. Now, I wasn't sure how I'd feel about destruction going forward with Mike leaving the band. He's always been one of my, uh, um, favorite uh, thrash uh, guitar players, but, uh, I, you know, I don't think they skip a beat. It, it sounds really good, and this just, this is a really great album cover. This could, this could be one of the album covers of the year, but, uh, yeah, it's, if you like thrash metal, classic thrash metal, everybody knows Destruction, uh, recommended if, you know, if you like thrash. Um, to complement Destruction, another album that probably should be, should be here, but, I, again, I didn't, I didn't want to spend the, the high the high price for it for the vinyl copy is the new creator, uh, Hey Duber Alice. I like it. I think it's really good, very enjoyable listen. I don't think it's quite up to par with uh, their 2019 or 2020 release, um, 
I, I liked it a little bit better, but uh, yeah, the new the new creator is very good as as well. And then uh, I wanted to highlight this band. I, uh, I I'm not a, a big doom metal guy. Um, not sure why. I just just not. Uh, but uh, this band was a band I came across off you know social media. And it's a duo from, uh, I'm not sure where, I'd have to do some research, I'm ill-prepared for that. But anyway, uh, the band's called Telekinetic Yeti, and this is uh, Primordial. Um, uh, it's uh, very, very riff-heavy and uh, sludgy and kind of stonery, and if you're into that kind of thing, I think you'd really dig this band. But uh, they make a very big noise uh, with just the two guys in the band. I really wanted to catch these guys up. Uh, live this year and, and wasn't able to to do that so um if i do have an opportunity to see these guys uh play live anywhere i'm going to jump on that uh, because this is a very enjoyable uh doom record um i want to mention another doom record that i wanted to pick up just haven't gotten around to it but they're a california band and they're called early moods and um you know i really thought that album was going to be one that i was going to showcase i uh, just like i said i haven't picked it up uh, but uh, if you uh, if you're into that kind of that style of, of metal, check out Early Moods. I think you're going to really like them. Um, sound a lot to me like uh, like um, candle like the late late '80s, early '90s candle mass, like you know Nightfall, that kind of era candle mass. And I also maybe heard a little bit of like uh, uh, early Fate's Warning. You know that kind of new wave new wave of uh, uh, or that new metal, well, the American version of the new wave of British heavy metal sound, kind of in some some of their material, but it's mostly doom and Sabbath oriented. If you, so again, if you like if you like that, you like early moods. A um, couple of other albums that uh, that I that I would like to have maybe had, just didn't get around to. Again, death metal, um, Autopsy, uh, the new Autopsy is really good. Um, I don't have my other. I have my tablet in front of me, so I'm trying to think of what the name of it is, and I'll remember it as soon as I end the video. But anyway, the new autopsy is 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 really good. Um, there is uh, uh, the new exhumed is is really good too. Uh, I, I could have picked it up. Um, Get you know, it, death metal. Check those out. You like those. Um, an album that I'm probably going to, or I think I am going to order it, uh, the more I think about it, because I've been playing it a lot lately. It came out toward the end of the year, is the newest solo album from Leather Leone of uh, Chastain fame. Those of you who've been into metal for a while know who Leather Leone is. But her new album um, is absolutely amazing. It's just, uh, the band is called Leather. Um, we Are the Chosen, I believe, is the name of the album. It's on Frontiers Records, and it is just really, really good classic metal. Uh, she has an amazing voice. Uh, she's being referred to uh, as, you know, like the the, Ron, the female Ronnie James Dio, which is not an inaccurate description. She's got a great voice. She sounds great on this record, and to see her still rocking out at the at, at her age and um, is just is really cool. So check out Leather. Um, we are the chosen. Uh, really good record. Um, There'll probably be one or two more. I did, I am waiting on an order from Prosthetic. Uh, they had a, a year-end sale where they had vinyl, you know, I think 15 bucks. I paid 15 bucks and a few cents in shipping for, for four albums that are coming. And uh, Psychroptic, the new Psychroptic is one of them. It's really, really good. Uh, I've listened to it a couple times and love it. I, I will listen to it a lot. Um, they have a great modern sound. Um and just uh, riffs, riffs, riffs. Just a really, really good album. Uh, the new Undeath is part of that. Uh, the new Werewolves. Um, and Sadistic Intent, I think, is is a, a newer American thrash metal band with kind of like some southern flair and elements in it. It's, it's, there's been a lot of buzz about them. But I, I'll, I'll show those when, when, when I get them. Um, and... Let's see, anything else off the top of my head that I can think of that I wanted to mention? Probably is, but anyway. Okay, so that being said, let's get on to uh, what I think. The, the, I think this is a pretty good, uh, pretty good 
a top 10. I really liked these albums. So uh, we'll say these are my top 10 of 2022. And let's just start with at number 10. This is a band I've been following for a while. They're from Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, I think they are uh, uh, a perfect example of everything that is modern, traditional heavy metal, and that is Savage Master. This is Those Who Hunt at Night. Um, great band. Uh, Adam and Stacy are really cool people if you've uh, ever gotten a chance to meet them at any of their shows. But they, they always put on a, a great uh, live show, and this is just chock full of 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 hooks and, and, and guitar solos and riffs and, and, uh, everything about, uh, if if you're into eighties traditional heavy metal, there's nothing at all to not like about Savage Master. Um, so yeah, those who hunt at night, we'll put that, we'll them coming in at number 10. At number nine, um, this was, uh, an album that, uh, I, I hadn't really, um, expected to be so impactful but i listened to it a lot and really enjoyed it uh and this is uh american they call themselves thrash i i think of them more as that kind of power metal that lies somewhere between straight american power metal and thrash you know like for instance uh face warning metal church heretic uh you know um Bands like that, even if you know for, for the thrashing of the spectrum, kind of more melodic thrash, like say Flotsam and Jetsam. But this is Trauma, their album Awakening. Um, unfortunately, uh, only really one original member left in the band is the drummer, and I can't think of his name right now. The the founding vocalist passed away, I believe, last year, um, and uh, did not. Uh, you know, obviously isn't on this record, but uh, get songwriting credits for some of the material. But uh, this is just a really, really good heavy metal record. Um, I do want to see uh, the guys in the vocalist. Uh, Brian Allen is the new vocalist. Um, Chris Chris Gustafson is the is the founding drummer, who's the, the remaining original member. Uh, but this also has Greg Christian on bass. Everyone knows him from Testament and. Uh, it was produced by Juan Ortega, uh, who, who, he's just, uh, you know, he's a consummate metal guy. Um, most, most of you, most of metal heads are familiar with things that he's involved in. Uh, but what you're going to get here is just really good, solid, heavy metal. Um, and, uh, I listened to this a lot, liked it a lot. Uh, these guys are going to be going on tour with Queensryche here in early 2023, so uh, hopefully big and bright things to come for Trauma. And those of you that aren't familiar with Trauma, this is a band that Cliff Burton was in prior to joining Metallica. Uh, but yeah, a really solid American uh, power metal. Um, like this album a lot. All right, that was at number nine. Let's go to number eight. Another, another uh, kind of, I guess, a, you know, a comeback album. Uh, um, um, an um, older American West Coast thrash band. Uh, that uh, was famous for its previous uh, uh, um, players. Uh, Les Claypool spent some time in, in this band back in the uh, late 80s, and, and the band is Blind Illusion, and this is Wrath of the Gods. Um, I played this a lot. This this is just a really, really uh, catchy and, and, and earwormy thrash metal album. Um, Mark Biderman, Biderman, Biderman is the uh, founding founding member on vocals and guitars. But what a supporting cast on this album! You've got Doug Piercy on guitar, who uh, used to be in Heathen, and Andy Gallion on drums, uh, who was in Death Angel. And then a guy named Tom Gears plays bass. Uh, really, really good album. And this is uh, I got this from Napalm. I kind of want to show this album because it's the vinyl variant's really cool. Um, I really like this, uh, that kind of purple and gray or swirl. Um, but yeah, I, I, I wasn't sure for, on first listen, I, I didn't really love this. And then I just kept listening, listening to it, listening to it, listening to it. And, uh, it, it just really continued to grow on me. And, uh, some of these songs, are really really great. Straight as the crowbar flies. That's probably my favorite song on the album. But uh, uh, slow death. That's just a straight thrasher. Proto molecule. 
It's kind of spacey lyrics. Uh, Wrath of the Gods is a, is, a, is a great tune with some great riffs. Um, you know, uh, it's seven tracks in the album, I would have maybe liked it to have had at least one more song. Uh, but it comes in at around 40 minutes, so lengthwise, it's okay. Um, but yeah, um, Blind Illusion, haven't made an album in a long time. Really like this a lot. Uh, grew on me quite a bit throughout the year. So I only got that. was 10, 9, that was 8. Let's go with number 7 here. Uh, tried and True, um, American black and thrash band is self-proclaimed. They, they, they tout themselves as a black and thrash band, but this album... And um, has elements of everything from thrash, traditional metal, black metal, death metal. This is goat whore with angels hung from the arches of heaven. Uh, just a fantastic album. Like I said, there's a lot of depth to this. If you like to peel back some of the layers, there's something in here for every kind of metal fan. Um, Sammy Duet's riffs are just all over the place. Guy's a great guitar player. Uh, ben Falgaust, his vocals are, are uh, really good on this album. Again, he's got that deep, deathy kind of growl, but that blackened tone to it. And, but you, you can pretty much understand what he's saying. Uh, and his, uh, his vocal delivery is uh, unique, and he's one of the best in the business, I think. Um, seen these guys a couple times. They're, one of my, they're really one of my favorite American metal bands. And this album didn't disappoint at all. Uh, liked it a lot. So that one we say that was seven, ten, nine, eight, seven, and coming in at six again, another one of my favorite American metal bands. Uh, I remember seeing these guys many, many, many years ago in Fort Wayne, Indiana. They were opening up for Mushroom Head and they were touring and supporting their very first uh album on I believe it was came on Metal Blade back then. And their sound has just uh I, I improved over the years, but I, I knew when I saw these guys that they were going to make an impact in, 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 um, metal at the time. And now they're not new now. I mean, they're, they're, they're one of the veteran acts in American metal and that's Lamb of God. Uh, this is Omens. Um, again, this was inexpensive to purchase on vinyl. It's a no brainer, but, um, you know, I, I really think I, it's a great album. I think it's a really awesome album cover to begin with, but, uh, you know the last few Lamb of God albums have all been good, and they're they're not they're not um, breaking any new ground as far as their their material goes. Uh, what you see is what you get with them, and I, I don't I don't have a problem with that. Um, uh, but I I feel like the songwriting on this album these songs are a little more memorable than some of the uh, uh, in the last three or four albums that they've released, um, and. Uh, all, all these songs kind of stay with you, and uh, there's just, uh, you know, really heavy groove, groove-oriented groove metal. Um, if, if, if you don't have, if you're really missing Pantera from your life, this particular album, I think, will help fill that gap. I'm not saying that, that, that Lamb of God is a carbon copy of Pantera, but I mean, let's face it, that's, you know, pretty similar in sound. Uh, but uh, Randy Bly's vocals, uh, uh, again, on, on this are, are great. Um, the guitar work is fantastic. The rhythm section work is great. Art Cruz is uh, has really come, come into his own as a as, it was a fantastic drummer anyway. But um, he fills he fills the the shoes left behind of uh, um, Chris. Uh, help me out, guy. You know who I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, Chris Adler. Uh, yeah, I, I just I don't think these guys can really do anything wrong and and. Uh, uh, from the moment I first heard this, uh, I, I knew this was going to be one of my favorites. So it came in at number six, uh, Lamb of God Omens. All right, um, this is where I'm going to cheat a little bit. Um, I'm going to do a 5.1, I suppose. Uh, one of my very favorite albums of the year. I don't have it to show because I ordered it from Agonia Records, which is a label in Greece. I'm waiting for it to get here. But it's a black metal band, and black metal is not one of my favorite genres. So if I'm going to listen to black metal, it's got to offer something a little bit different. And uh, this band was a band that I heard of. Um, 2020, I think, was the first time I had heard of them. And uh, they just uh, they bring kind of a not noir element. They, they, it's, it's a kind of a jazzy black metal, not like Imperial Triumphant, though. That's just too clamoring and noisy for, for me. Uh, but this band uh, incorporates a lot of 
um, uh, saxophone in their music and I, I I'm you know I'm a sax player so I any any band that can put saxophone in, into some metal I'm gonna I'm gonna be down with uh, but anyway the band is called and I'll I'll try to get a thumbnail in here uh, they're called a neon they're from Greece a neon the album is uh, Nisinamine if I'm saying that right uh, but anyway oh I just love this album it's got great memorable uh, uh, tunes on it, uh, and the, the, the performances are, are fantastic, and it, it just gives uh, a, a little more depth to, to, to the black metal that you're going to get from There's a lot of traditional kind of element sounds to, to it, uh, so if you, I mean, if you like regular thrash uh, and, um, you, and, and just heavy metal, but, but always kind of been a little shied away from, the, from black metal for whatever reason, um, this might this might be something that would would be in your comfort zone, but anyway, I really like it, and it would definitely be in my top ten if it were here, uh, but it's not. But I wanted to mention it. Okay, so now let's uh, go forward with uh, five, what I've got here, five through one. Um, at number five, uh, see in the background here. I ask if anybody else kind of thought this. The very first thing I ever noticed about this album was in the band logo. It made me think of one of these classic, one of the classic uh, uh, live hard rock metal albums. This is Blue Oyster Cult with On Your Feet or On Your Knees. But uh, that's this is one of the coolest album covers ever. I mean, it's very heavy metal looking for a band that wasn't all that heavy, honestly. Uh, but you just can't get much more metal than this, 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 this logo. Um, and when this album first was released, that was the first thing I noticed was the similarity to it. And that is um, Blind Guardian with the God Machine. Great album cover. Um, Blind Guardian's a power metal band, a, a German power metal band. Been around forever. They're, they're one of the uh, leading uh, bands in that genre. If you're not familiar with them, most, most metal heads know who they are. Um, and I have always liked Blind Guardian. Um, and Hansi Kirsch is a very unique vocalist, and he's very easily identifiable, uh, you know, when you hear him. And uh, I have enjoyed their albums over the years. Uh, but I've kind of, I think the last few releases of theirs have fallen into that category of just kind of same songy for me and didn't really stand out. Uh, but this one... This one is really good, and I'll tell you why I think it stands out, and see if anybody thinks I'm crazy here. I feel like listening to this Blind Guardian album, that this is an album that Blind Guardian wrote, maybe trying to write an Iced Earth album? I don't know, let's not forget about your opinions of Iced Earth, and, and you know, for for non-musical reasons, but list, they're, they're one of my all-time favorite bands, and I, I love the sound of them. And um, I think they're one of those bands that straddled that line of uh, traditional power metal and thrash. Uh, and this has been labeled a power metal album, but uh, it's not like that noodly European-sounding fairy godmother power metal kind of thing. It's just not always my bag. This, man, this has... They've really amped up the the metallic elements on here. Like uh, there's there's just some straight thrash moments, some dark and brooding um, uh, sounds and tones and guitar tones that that I think give this more. Um, you know, I don't know. Let's think about Halloween. Maybe trying to sound more like Metal Church. Uh, you know, I I just I feel like they up the ante with the with the more metallic elements in, in, the, in the power metal. So I, I kind of hesitate to call the God Machine a power metal album. Uh, now, are there some moments on here that are more in that, that kind of genre? But, man, some really good stuff. Deliver Us From Evil, uh, Damnation, great songs. Uh, Secrets of the American Gods, great song. Violent Shadows, Life Beyond the Spheres is a really good song. Um, Architects of Doom, Blood of the Elves is just a straight thrasher uh really heavy um this is just a great album uh, my only my only ding on this is i i don't love the production i think it sounds a little um robotic at times i wish it sounded a little more um uh organic i suppose 
Um, maybe it's a little compressed, whatever, you know, whatever that means. Uh, but the, the songwriting is great. The, the, it's, so, it's a lot of great guitar work. Vocal performance is amazing. And it's just, the, to me, it's a standout album. And it was very easily one of the top ten best. All right, so that was at, uh, what would we say, five. Number four, this is a band that, uh, this is probably my uh, my um, surprise of the year or my my uh, band of the year that I didn't know about till this year. Uh, this is a American death metal band out of Fargo. Uh, Fargo's in North Dakota. Yeah. A uh, band called Maul with Seraphic Punishment. On um, They're on Redefining Darkness uh, Records. Oh man, this thing just come out of nowhere and 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 pummel me. I, I did a full review of this album on the channel. Check it out if you're interested. Uh, so I won't say a whole lot about it now, other than this this just got a lot of uh, play time throughout the year. I love the album cover. This is maybe one of maybe my favorite album cover of the year. Man, I got to see these guys play live and meet the band, and they're all great dudes. And this is just a a, a pummeling death metal album that has a lot of groove elements to it a lot of melody interspersed throughout here a lot of different vocal inflections with the with the, the vocal delivery um and again uh, just one of the standout records easily easily in my top five throughout the year so coming to number four we've got maul with seraphic punishment all right number three this is a an, an album that didn't really take me by surprise um a lot of a lot of people think this is uh, these are the new crusaders of of traditional uh, heavy metal, and I would not disagree with that. They're a Canadian band. Uh, their debut album came out a couple years ago, and I didn't immediately jump on that bandwagon. Uh, I didn't I didn't think that they were uh, that album didn't hit me as amazing as as everyone said it was at the time. Um, I, I do really like it, but this one. This one kind of just upped the game a little bit, I think, because they they uh, added a new vocalist who's, I think his range was just a little more clearer um, and just sounded a little more true, uh, for lack of a better uh, explanation. But this is Riot City with Electric Elite. Uh, this album just shreds from top to bottom. It starts with Eye of the Jaguar. Uh, Beyond the Stars, Tyrant, my, probably my favorite song on the album. It closes out with a song called Severed Ties, which uh, is getting a lot of comparisons to like uh, early, more, more metallic Queens, right? Uh, but uh, yeah, this is just uh, stellar uh, from everything. There's just a high, the, the, the amount of energy that, that it brings uh, to the, the musical performances, the songwriting is spot on, and uh, this band and this album is everything good about modern heavy metal. Now, it's not all that original. It's deeply rooted in their influences. If you like Queensryche, Judas Priest, uh, Iron Maiden, any of, in, any of the classic heavy metal bands, you're going to dig this. Uh, but it's uh, uh, it's just high-octane, high-powered heavy metal with uh, lots of uh, loud guitars and uh, really solid uh, um, rhythm section work. Uh, and great, uh, great vocals. Um, fantastic album and comes in at number three. All right. Number two and number one. Oh, I, I want to say these could be intertwined, uh, at any given moment they could change, but that's not really accurate. My number one has pretty much been number one throughout the year, but, but my number two record is one that I really, really, really like a lot. I've been playing it a lot here in the last week and, um, uh, man, I just, I love this album. Um, I want to kind of shout out to, uh, Darcy, if you're watching this video, um, I've never heard you mention this band. I, I think you would love these guys if you're not familiar with them. Um, and, uh, Renee, uh, I, uh, from Spain, I, I think if you, if you've, I don't think I've ever heard you talk about this band either. And I, I think you would really like them a lot. This is a band out of Texas, uh, thrash metal band. Uh, they're kind of described as crossover thrash i i don't see them as that i just think they're straight old old school thrash metal with some blackened elements but this is high command with eclipse of the dual moons oh man this album was just amazing if you like megadeth and slayer and uh, metallica uh, if you like the big four if you're into the early stages of 80s american thrash metal 
this is the band for you. Much like Enforced and Power Trip, um, you know, High Command is, is on the precipice of assuming control of all that is uh, modern American thrash metal. Uh, and and uh, this is a concept album, lyrically, tells the story of uh, the uh, kingdom of Sikartha and uh, battles associated with uh, uh, this land. Um, you know, the, the, just the talent that goes into crafting a, a concept album uh, with thrash metal music and keeping it interesting, you know, that's that's not been talked a lot about in, in the reviews of this album, but uh, it just comes right out of the gate with the clips of the dual moons. It's a full-on thrasher, uh, foot, on the f foot on the floor accelerator. Uh, it comes out uh, with that kind of uh, adrenaline, and then it goes into Immortal Savagery, which is one of my favorite songs of the year, and Oh, the first thing that comes to mind there is is uh, uh, Peace Cells, uh, Aaron Megadeth. Um, I mean, you know, if you didn't want to buy the new Megadeth album, just listen to High Command, and you'll get that kind of energy and aggression that uh, was channeled when you first heard those uh, those early thrash albums. You're going to get a lot of uh, Kill 'Em All kind of style uh, Metallica. Um, in this, a uh, lot, lot of uh, uh, Slayer, the, the kind of harmonic, dual harmonic thrash guitar tones that you got from Slayer uh, when, when they would play their more, their, their slower um, uh, songs. Uh, but just, uh, there's, there's not a bad thing about this album at all. I, 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 there's a lot of diversity offered here. Uh, there's uh, some melodic moments, some quiet moments, some, 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 some high speed moments, lots of great riffs. And if you are a fan of thrash metal, uh, there is not much to be disappointed about um, Eclipse of the Dual Moons by High Command, a uh, band out of Texas. And that leads us into my number one album of 2022. Uh, this one's been at the top pretty much most of the year. And when I first heard it, I didn't think it was going to have that kind of impact on me, but I, I love this album. I've been listening to it. Probably, I, it probably got the most spins of any album this year. And you, know, you want to talk about uh, a metal album and its originality. Um, it, it sounds so much like nothing else because this is a band who was part of uh, the, the beginning of, of it all. Um, this is uh, a, a new wave of, of British heavy metal band, one of the uh, classic innovators in the genre. Um, and while a lot of those bands kind of incorporated, you know, the, the, basic principles of uh, loud guitars, quick, you know, fast, fast rhythms, uh, riffs, um, gruffy vocals, uh, you know, they, they, they don't sound like anybody else. And that's why one of the reasons I love this album, I think it sounds very original. It sounds like itself. And you'd expect that from a band like, uh, like this. And then they're old guys. And I love it when old guys come out and deliver something of this quality. Uh, but this is uh, Satan with Earth Infernal, um, this album just totally smokes. Uh, it's it's meant to be it's meant to be listened to from start to finish. It has a really good ebb and flow. The songs all uh, sound really good together. Um, one of the things about this album is the guitar tone is not super um, heavy. It's very clean. Uh, but it's not really distorted like, you know, like thrash guitar tones, uh, power metal guitar tones. There's a lot of clean, very clean playing in this album. But uh, this album's got everything. It's got, uh, it's got uh, great riffs, great guitar solos. Uh, the songs, just like I said, they, they flow. There's always something going on. Um, you, you, you don't lose interest in, in these tunes. The songwriting is spot on. Uh, fantastic rhythm section. The the the, the bass and uh, uh, drums are are great. The drumming on this album is is stellar, um, and I'm pretty sure this is the original lineup um, of uh, minus maybe maybe one guy. Um, but uh, let's get let's get this album out. So it's got a pretty cool uh, gatefold. Um, this is the only release I have on vinyl and CD. Um, it's got an orange, the vinyl pressing is kind of like this translucent orange. It says Firefly Glow Marbled Vinyl. I don't really see that it's marbled, but um, 
So who do we have here? We've got uh, um, these original band members. Uh, let's go through the list. I know it's somewhere. Uh, Brian Ross on vocals, Russ Tippins, the guitar, uh, Steve Ramsey, guitar, uh, Graham English, bass, Sean Taylor, drums. I, I want to say that the, the, this is the original band from like back in the mid 80s. Um, as you can tell, they're, they're all older guys, but what a fantastic album. I mean, these songs are just great. Every song on here is a winner. Um, Ascendancy starts the album off. Uh, with, you know, kind of uh, high speed, and then you get uh, Burning Portrait. The videos for both of those uh, songs, if you're unfamiliar with this band and the album, check those out. Um, and then my personal favorite on the album, 12 Infernal Lords, a great song, uh, a great instrumental, and Mercury Shadow, uh, Sorrow and Spent has some great riffs in it, um, Luciferic uh, from Second Side, another, another great album, Poison Allergy, uh, the, the Blood Ran Deep to uh, Earth We Bequeath. Um, this song has a riff in it, one of the cooler, more uh, uh, memorable uh, metal riffs of the entire year. You'll know it when you hear it because you just always know a great riff. Um, but I absolutely love this album. It's, it's, I put it on and I want to I wanna listen to it from start to finish. And when it's over, I want to hit repeat. And I think that's what makes a great album. So... Um, not only is this my favorite album of 2022, I, I think I think this is one of the finer uh, metal albums that's been released in the last several years. Oh, the uh, Metal Blade release also it comes with a poster. Let me just get it out and show it to you um, of, of the album art. Um, but yeah, Metal Blade does a great job of putting together uh, these vinyl releases. You get kind of a lot. Uh, you get a digital download also um, in here. And, uh, yeah, uh, you know, the new wave of British heavy metal is where it all began for the most part. And um, these guys were innovators. Um, Court in the Act is one of the all-time legendary new wave of British heavy metal albums. And uh, I just, I think this is a great release um, from a band that doesn't need to compete with anybody else. They don't have to sound like anybody else because... They were one of the originators in the in the in the forefront of all of it. So yeah, number one album of 2022, Satan, Earth Infernal, and that's uh, that's kind of my year in review. That's everything that I really liked from 2022. There's said so there's probably one or two I, I didn't pick up that I didn't get to mention. Oh uh, yeah, the new soil work is really good. There's a, a, a modern death metal band, modern tech death kind of. I wouldn't call them metalcore, but they're out of Colorado called Allegion. They had they had a great album this year, uh, and Damn Them. Uh, check it out. Um, what else? Uh, one thing you didn't see on my list, because I'm just not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of metalcore. Uh, everybody's raging about this band, Lorna Shore. I just can't get into the stuff. I tried. I can't. Uh, but there were a couple of metalcore albums that came out early in the year. Fit for an Autopsy is one that, if I had spent more time with it, I, I think it might have been one I could have featured. And um, Eternal Earth, I think that might be the name of them. It came out in January, um, and it was it was uh, uh, it grabbed me as kind of a really uh, good listen. Uh, but uh, yeah, metalcore, deathcore, not not really my bag. I just 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 don't get into it. So anyway. Uh, those are my favorite albums of the year. Let me know what you think. Let me know what yours are. Uh, this video's gone on a little bit longer than I intended, but you know, hey, um, hopefully you enjoyed it. And I've uh, got some ideas for some more content. I'd like to start making some, some more videos going forth. And uh, hopefully the next one I get is going to be, um, as I pick up a few of the albums that I didn't get for the end of the year, I'll try to show those and 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 uh, feature those a little bit. So anyway, I hope everyone had a great 2022 uh, Happy New Year to all of you, and there's some great albums on the horizon, great music on the horizon. Um, that obituary is coming out here in the next few days, and uh, I, I'm pretty sure that that's going to be one of the top albums of the year, and it's it's going to set the set the the bar pretty high for 2023. So uh, it's been great talking to you, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side.